Okay, now now it works, no? Yeah. Um, well, when the when I got the first email from the EDMC about calls for presentation, one of the topics was fibro relationship to other industry uh, standards, and well, that's the area I have worked in a lot, and in the past years um, on um, uh, semantics and industry standards. So um, out of these, um, I picked the XBIL standard which is quite nice because there were several questions uh, in the morning about XBIL. And I'm pretty sure that this presentation will answer any more questions than you will ever have about getting XBIL data into FIBO and creating XBIL out of the FIBO. And we go through the example of the uh, um, US Bank Powell report. Anybody familiar with it? Yes, I see. No? <laughs> Those who work in banking are okay. Let's let's go. So we know all five was the key to better data management. However, it can be uh, difficult to get started with the five and to integrate industry standards. Now. Why are we here like this? This guy here in the shadow, uh, he, he sits over there. Um, on the, the uh, FIBO website, they, they had this several reasons why to attend. And the one that um, I care most about is to learn uh, the best practices for deploying FIBO. And I guess that's for many you, of you here in the room, that's the main reason that you travel to Atlanta. And now, with that, we get for the, the finance side, executive side, we, we get the, the use case of proof and trust in the data. And um, for the uh, technical folks in program management in architecture, it will help us to manage the, the daunting complexity about uh, what we heard a lot uh, today. And now, as, we, as you see this deck here, like always here at the... Huh? No, it doesn't want anymore. At least I don't see it. Okay, at the, the bottom left corner, you always see this um, um, the little circle. So here an F, primarily addressed at finance, finance key point. When you see a slide, oh, thank you. When you see a slide with um, um, P, it goes one level deeper details the key point with further explanation. All the yellow slides here are architecture technical details. So if you take the deck, you can trim it down to an exact uh, presentation of seven slides to 15 slides or see the full 40 pages. Now, anybody has seen this picture? Nobody. Okay, now this is the office of Consolidated Life Insurance, the New York office from 1960. And when a few years after I came to America, my first big uh, Basel project was at a bank in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it was exactly the same thing. They cleaned out a whole floor and uh, part of me, there were a hundred other IBM consultants in there, another hundred consultants from other vendors interned. So again, we had the hundreds of people all, all in the floor. And um, now what did they do? Hundreds of people mapping primarily between hundreds, between numerous heterogeneous systems, different languages, different metadata and components. And now this is uh, the bright new uh, world. <clears throat> the future, and how I see it, it's actually a virtuous circle. So where FIBO integrates industry standards. In turn, supervisory regulations, they are expressed in standards. And then uh, the regulations in turn, they are a really good driver to build out your FIBO program. So it really becomes a self-enforcing beneficial uh, cycle. Okay, now how do we do that? Um, onboarding the industry standards, compliance forms, and reports into FIBO, it's really an easy two-step process. And uh, with that, it is um, source, staging, target. And we've all done this and seen this a hundred times in conventional ETL. Now, the only thing that's different, that's improved is that here, this middle part, everything here, is semantic uh, uh, ETL. And with that, we get the benefits of a common storage that everything, lineage, mapping, everything is stored in the uniform same way. Everything is available. 
Okay, and, and just one note about it, uh, this, um, the XBL and the core report ontology that I talk about, um, it's, it's open source. It has the same license as the FIBO, so you're free to, to download the, the XBL files, to download the FFIC ontology and play with it. Okay, so step one here, uh, from source to staging, we extract the uh, industry standard XBL um, and, and the uh, um, uh, core report into ontology staging. Now the, the core report, the uh, Federal Deposit Insurance Ins uh, Corporation, they are the author of that report, they are the auditor of the banks. Okay, and now the uh, FFIEC, that's an interagency uh, body, they work for FDIC, they work for the Fed, and they are doing some of the IT stuff, okay? So they are the publisher, of the uh, core report in XBIL. They are the ones who accept the bank filings. They are the ones who disseminate the information to the public. Okay, and all we do then is, we, we, we want to go from uh, the, the XBIL, we reverse engineer the schema, we reverse engineer the data into staging. Okay, XBIL, Extensional Business Reporting Language, it is uh, the global standard uh, to exchange business reports. And now the XBIL ontology is a one-to-one -one representation of the XBIL schema. Okay, so there's no brain work, no improvement really on it. It's all one-to-one, -one, a different representation of the same specification. Okay, so um, what XBIL does very nicely, though, therefore I like it a lot, it separates the reporting items from presentation, calculation, edit checks, definitions, captions, and so on. And it does this in the core with three files, and that's all the core report takes. Um, Xlink allows us to, to link different uh, points in XML uh, documents. And um, LinkBase, that extension to XLink, it puts a framework uh, in it to, to um, uh, define rules and relations on these links. So uh, with that, I, I can say I have links for um, presentation, for calculation, and edit checks. So that's what LinkBase does. And then finally, instance, that is the basic reporting item with their metadata, context, units, data types, and formats. So these three building blocks really make up the core of um, XBIL. <clears throat> now the benefit is we only have to load instance data into the ontology. We do not have to care about the uh, report structure. And our import, our data is still valid, even if the structure of the report changes. Okay, so now how does that happen? Um, like here, we, we I use uh, TopRate, the, the ontology editor, which has an import uh, facility for XSD. And what it does is uh, for a, every namespace in the XSD, the XML schema, it, um, it creates an ontology file. So I get run the import, I get xlink, link base, instance, ontology files, all files. Okay, so how does the file look like? At the left hand side, this is the, um, uh, from XML Spy, um, a, a look at numeric item attributes, which is um, actually an attribute group within the, the XSD um, for, for instance. And um, now converted, if I look at the ontology class for it, I, I see that here the precision and the, the decimals, they have become, um, they have become here um, class restrictions. Okay, and, and now very important what the import also does is this here. This S XML tag, semantic XML tag, this is the original tag from my, my XSD. And this is how uh, then the, the tooling imports um, XBL instances and how it writes XBL instances. It looks up, it finds the tag in the original, it looks up where is my class with the tag, and that is where it writes the instance. Okay, now, um, so far I have the XBL framework. Now, um, taxonomy defines specific sets of reports. 
Okay, so so then um, it extends the XBL base classes with subtypes for specific reporting items. These are the sections, tables, calculations for very well known, of course, is, is US GAAP. XBIL is worldwide the, the most common uh, uh, utilization of XBIL. I'm currently working on uh, solvency, that's the insurance uh, uh, industry, um, where um, in Europe they utilize XBIL for their supervisory regime. And today we look at the CAL report. <clears throat> Now the FFIEC, they publish, they do a pretty good job for a government agency really. They, they publish um, the, the schema here, the taxonomy, and they, they, they also um, publish um, instance file of bank reports. So here's the Deutsche from uh, September last year. So you can look up any bank, any, any uh, schedule, and you find a whole set of reports published by the um, FFIEC. <clears throat> now the FFIEC ontology, just like we had before, is then an XTEC um, oral version of the taxonomy. No, so one-to-one -one representation of the FFIEC taxonomy file. So we end up having here um, um, uh, at the top the XBL instance. FFIEC instance extends these basic reporting types. We have FFIEC concept, and this is really like where the bulk is. Um, the FFIEC has a microdata reference uh, manual that defines like 4,000 different reporting items in the call report and other reports as well. And uh, so these are mostly numeric uh, items, no? asset values and so on, codes, uh, um, um, <coughs> altogether over 4,000 items. And then at the bottom, I have um, the, the instance file. In this case, it's JP Morgan Chase from September last year. And that is the file that holds the actual um, data values. So you have a whole hierarchy here of ontology files, including each other, or graphs, including each other. OK, now the instance file here, this is a um, um, here an example. So here it has an item of the RSSD, it has a context, and this is the actual value. So if you open an XBL instance file from the FFIEC, you will see like 2,000 lines like this. And it's actually, it's, it's quite nice. I, I, I love I, I XBL over this because it's so simple to read, to pass, and to put into FIBO. And now the import then generates instances of the uh, concept. So for every uh, of the 2,000 line in the JP Morgan Chase report, I get um, instances here. And they are all of the type here of the MDRM item that it finds in the XBL instance source file. OK, so we go from here. And it imports it as instances at resources with the type of the FFIEC class. OK, and now um, um, then, then again here, very important, like here we have um, yeah, all the whole list of the, the uh, thousands of classes. And then again, the XML tag that preserves like the original XSD item. OK, and then I can query the two, and I can compare here my, my download from the FFIEC. This is the entity schedule from the uh, core report, and I compare it here with, with the query results on ontology staging. And here just is uh, the complete set of the FFIEC ontology files. Now, and we here, uh, for our data, we only need this track here. If we want to reproduce the core report out of the ontology with a Sparkle query, then we need here uh, the calculation, edit, check, presentation, definition, and so on. OK, so uh, this is how, how the, the query uh, looks like. You heard that already today. It's very similar to, to SQL. We specify like the items that we want to, to select. And the where clause is basically joining all these different uh, um, um, triples. And then the order by here is just by the Cowell schedule and the line number. 
and then I, I can compare like the top here, you can download this, like the, the presentation, I think it's with the uh, uh, distributed files. Um, up here is uh, the FFIC download. Here are the, the results of the query that we saw in the, in the um, previous page and yeah, they're identical. Now, uh, so now what, where are we now? We got the data in ontology staging and we have validated no, that the data is correct. We reproduced no, the, the original FFIEC report. So next step, step two, is uh, to transform XPL staging and load it into, into FIBO classes. So the, the way that works is that um, these gears here, the inference engine, well, that's the motor, and it, it uh, uh, works through the mapping that we define. And then it executes the uh, load into target by using Sparkle. Sparkle construct, which is the same as in uh, SQL insert. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, uh, uh, so in the uh, ontology editor, we can pull in here our source, in this case from all staging and FSIC concept here. This is the one in the core report for the legal entity identifier. Target site, FIBO already has a legal entity identifier, excellent. Um, and uh, then we just connect the two classes and we tell then the tool how to build the URI. Likewise, we can take a data property. Here, this is the actual value of the LEI and we want this copied over to the unique identifier in FIBO LEI. And, and here, like the way it works, uh, here we can freely define like what is the data field that we want. We define a template and here um, I think this is a good convention that um, I, use, I use the fiber prefix LEI to tell how the argument is made up and what comes out of it then is the full um, um, string of the URI, no? starting with the fiber root ending with the value of the LEI. And one note on, on this, um, <clears throat> I basically made the whole target up with the LEI. No? So the LEI propagates from the LEI value to the stock corporation, to the, so everything identified by the LEI, which is um, a great thing that we, that we have said in, in, in FIBO really. Okay, now, um, yeah, likewise, I can map then the uh, data property. And for things that are a bit out of the box, unusual, beyond the simple data movement, we can always tag um, a Sparkle rule. So here, what I want is for every, every um, instance I create in FIBO, I want to know what is its source in old staging. So I populate um, a, an object property has source instance. And this here is just the where clause where I utilize the mapping context and it will write this attributes pointing to the origin of my record in FIBO. Okay, um, and, and now we, um, uh, we run this engine and we will look at the, the FIBO data mapping and the lineage. So for the data, we can see that um, actually now <coughs> My class, FIBO Legal Entity Identifier, it has a new resource, a new instance. And the uh, source instance points here to my original uh, staging record. A Sparkle uh, rule has populated the link to the corporation. So LEI is uh, the value, the identifier code, and it, it links in FIBO to um, um, the uh, corporation that it identifies. So, and, um, yeah, and finally here the uh, uh, unique identifier, it has the correct value populated. Now in this year is uh, the complete graph in FIBO. <coughs> I don't know if it's, if it's readable here at all. So here we have our legal entity identifier which identifies a FIBO stock corporation. The so stock corporation has issued capital and monetary amount. It has a registered address in Ohio and it has an, um, it is identity. And this is the uh, functional business entity in FIBO, no? the role that JP Morgan uh, plays um, and which is uh, as a depository institution. 
And also then it has another identifier, which is the FDIC uh, certificate number. No? So 628 is the number FDIC knows JP Morgan Chase as. No? And uh, with that, it's also here in the uh, it's, rec uh, it's uh, regulated by the FDIC and it's in the FDIC institution directory. And very nice about FIBO, these values here are already populated, yes? Griffin, uh, did you find yourself adding and extending FIBO to have the full mapping between XPRL and what's in FIBO? Um, for, for this use case, no, I didn't. It was all there. Well, that's why I took this example. <laughs> um, um, I, I, did the, I did the same thing uh, for the, um, with the Securities Exchange Commission, the um, 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 Investment Advisor Act in Dodd-Frank. And there, there was quite a bit to, to extend and to add. No? But this, this example, it's all fiber on the target side. But, uh, that's very nice and uh, wonderful choice to pick in. But where you have found in those use cases that you've had to extend, uh, and, uh, for you and anyone here, we would love that to be contributed into uh, the core FIBO ontologies so that any user extensions all become part of the future fabric of FIBO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and, and the target side where I did extend it on, um, yeah, mainly for investment funds and, and uh, um, hedge funds, um, that is also um, open source, no? So you, you, you guys can, can download and look at it, where does it extend the fiber? And of course, you know, like we can work together, I can help like um, un understanding it, no? Yeah? Um, just to be clear, it looks to me like your automatic translation Yes. This is this is correct. Yeah, this is correct. No? And and uh, I, I mean, here we have uh, um, Niklas here from Deutsche Bank. We had this this debate. You know, can you really call this an ontology if you reverse engineer database table? Now that's why I just call it old staging. No? but it is on purpose that I didn't add any smarts to the staging area because, and we, we get to that, I should run out of time, um, uh, because I also want to generate the core report out of FIBO. Therefore, I need to be staging, be identical to the FFIEC source. <clears throat> okay, and then here again is uh, the query uh, that joins and traverses now in the fiber and here what you see in the query here, this is all fiber. No? So we, we, we have the data loaded into fiber, we run a sparkle and this is what comes out of it. Okay, and now this was the data. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. No. Um, so the uh, well, and it the inference engine or reasoner um, that is like a, a process that comes with ontology editors. No? Proto J has it. Top rate has it. Um, triple stores have it. And they the main thing what they do is uh, uh, to to compute the inferences. Mm -hmm. Sorry. What? Which tool specifically did you use, or how you use it? Um, top rate. Okay. No. So, so the top rate inference engine also executes the spin rules and the mapping rules. No. That that's how it how it works. No. Um, but, but by the way, at least for, for populating the staging, um, I mean, this is so simple, like these, these simple one-line statements in the XPL instance. And then the, um, the uh, generated RDF is very simple. You can script that even, no? 
and that's, that's the beauty with everything XBIL based. No? It's, it's uniform, 2,000 identical lines, basically. No? Um, now, let me move on. We, we, so we, we looked at the data in FIBO. Now, um, because it's all semantic ETL, the mapping also is in triples. So again, I can just do a simple select, and here I see all my mappings. So I don't have to go to a separate ETL tool no, and, and make a, a two-month project out of it for people to assemble that data. It's in the same RDF store where I have my, my fiber, where I have the staging area. So the mapping is in triples. Now the lineage is in triples, and here I... I have uh, my uh, FIBO depository institution. An instance of it here is uh, JP Morgan Chase. It has a source instance, and I can look it up here and find what is the FFIEC concept, the class that it has. So this gives me my lineage from FIBO back to the uh, uh, FDIC. And again, it's a, it's a simple uh, uh, Spark will select. And this is the outcome of this query. No? I go from FIBO class instance, staging instance class, all the way here to the tag in the XPIL file, complete end to end. OK, now the reverse, same way. Um, here I take FIBO, I do a semantic ETL into staging, and I export a, a, a modified call report. So there is no reverse mapping. We have to do the, the work in the, in the opposite direction. In this case, here is a FIBO registration address. It populates three call report items here for the zip code state and the, the city. And, and now our test case is JP Morgan Chase moves the headquarters to Vermont. And for that, um, yeah, I just, um, in, in the target, in, in FIBO for this instance, I just overwrote the city name and so on. No? So, um, and now running the inference engine, looking at the result, and I look at this RSSD 9130 item, which is the, the, the city. And I see, okay, here it has, has changed to, to Montpelier. And now, next step, in top rate here, I can um, um, invoke the export. I tell top rate out of my ontology here. Um, I named it uh, 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 here uh, JP Morgan Chase in, in Vermont. Export this uh, uh, ontology to XML. <clears throat> And then when I open the X, uh, XML, I can see like that it's a valid XBIL. Open it here with, with uh, XML spy. And um, here it, it does a syntax check for me, not to say here, okay, XBIL, JP Morgan Chase in Vermont is valid and so on. Okay, now uh, um, very fast now for uh, namespaces and import. That's uh, how you should set up the architecture. And we have already, we have uh, XPIL, we have the FFIEC that imports XPIL. Here we have FIBO. Um, now, finrec.com XPIL, this is uh, um, the namespace um, for, the, the ontology, for the XPIL ontology files. And Finrec on then uh, has reverse engineered XPIL.org and it imports FIBO. So that would be an example where, where you have extensions to, to FIBO. And now, um, this, is still, um, <clears throat> this is still a core ontology here, FIBO and FINREC or for the financial industry. And then you have operational ontologies that really work with, with data. So here, in this case, the bank ontology, uh, uh, that has the FFIEC. Um, um, classes and also it has like the, 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 the data files no? for instances reverse engineered from XPL instances uh, move to um, to FIBO. And now this, this, this uh, um, reference architecture, I can extend it. Right now I'm working with, with insurances, <clears throat> uh, basically the same thing. 
um, um, here with EIOPA, that's uh, the European insurance uh, regulator. Another example, we mentioned that before, um, the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission and here fund ontology, hedge fund ontology, they have in the same way reverse engineered um, the Investment Advisor Act form and form PF for, for private funds, which was a lot more difficult because they are not expressed, unfortunately, in XBL. No? So you have to figure out like the structure of the, the report. No? XBL makes it a lot easier. Now, final one, and this one is very uh, dear to me. Um, now, besides here data files, data file standards, I also um, want to import the regulatory requirements. And so the FinRec ONT has um, reverse engineered into the ontology the United States Code and the Code of Federal Regulations. Now, uh, I think you're all familiar with Fe uh, Code of Federal Regulations, yes? Yeah, no? Um, so, um, and why do I do this? Because it breaks it down to the subparagraph, to the note. I can tie this requirement to my FIBO class, to my data movement rule, to my defined class. So I have the end-to-end -end from requirement to my implementation. That's why it's so important to have USC and CFR in it. And you can do the same um, with, with your business requirements. No? Just like load them into an ontology on a granular level and tie your design to it. Okay, lessons learned. Your FIBO has a good support for compliance, in particular the entity schedule from the XBL report. Um, the imports and transformations are, are kind of kind of slow in top rate, and um, yeah, and FIBO should have more uh, content for for accounts and balances. There's really not not enough like um, no um, where we <coughs> we know the. Okay, super. Okay, to recap, we want to get from the 60s to the 21st century and we can do that with semantic compliance at doing this virtual circle of FIBO standards and regulations. Great. Thank you.